All right, guys, today we're gonna talk about a blade that I think is pretty darn cool. Now this, what you're looking at right here is the ABW or American Blade Works Model 1. Now this is one of their newer iterations. The original Model 1s had more of a standard tip, but they do offer them now in Warncliffs. And of course, this one's in Ultim, it's in Magna Cut, has all the things most modern knife EDC junkies love. I believe it is also running on bearings. Could be wrong, but it feels like it is. So feels like it is and it acts like it is because it is pretty darn smooth even though I've played with it for a little bit now but today like I said I wanted to talk about this knife because it is very cool and moreover too I have finally like gotten one of these knives now full disclosure this was sent to me by American Blade Works or the owner of ABW but the primary reason why that is is because these things can be very tricky to track down and I honestly after like two months of trying to get one of these in them escape my grasp I finally just broke down and was like hey I know that like I don't love asking for knives and I don't love you know like getting knives for free per se but it, I just really want to review want to feature and want to like have one of them or bring this channel to or bring this knife to my channel if I can English correctly right now so I did ask him and he did hook me up with an awesome model one so I do really appreciate that because like I said some of these knives especially things like TRMs and ABWs can be tricky to get so that's why I have in the past worked with people like TRM or companies like TRM and ABW to have them send out knives because I really do like uh, bringing these knives to you guys it's just sometimes I legitimately cannot find them or I'm just like a few minutes late trying to buy one and so yeah I'm human and you know sometimes Sometimes you just can't get things the way that you want them. So anyways, th that is a full disclosure, you know, at the beginning of this video, this was sent to me, but that does not impact my thoughts because I've already been trying to buy a Model 1 for some time. So I definitely already wanted one and I am very excited to have one on the channel. So anyways, a long story out of the way. Like I said, this is a Model 1 by American Blade Works. Now, one of my favorite things, not only about the, or this knife, not only is like the ergonomics, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, but if you are like me and you do have a lot of respect or desire to get knives that have a high emphasis on full American production, the ABWs, very much like the TRMs, are a knife company and maker you definitely should keep on your radar because once again American Blade Works kind of as the name implies really puts a heavy emphasis on making everything or sourcing everything from America so obviously they make the knives in-house the blade steel obviously comes from America the handle scales um, like the materials everything that goes into this knife is either made in America or sourced in America so this is a 100% American made product and I really 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 dig that and once again, it's very similar to my um, TRMs that I have in the collection, and that is part of what drew me to wanting to get a, a, an American Blade Works knife. Now, like I was saying, another thing that I do really love about the Model 1, and I believe what I would love about the Model 2, haven't held it exactly, but these ergonomics are absolutely fire. Now, I will say, in my opinion, because of the worn cliff, it looks a little bit weird when this knife is closed, but when this thing is open, not only does it look pretty rad, I'm not going to lie, I do, I do love this really sloped worn cliff, but it feels so freaking comfortable in the hand. It is, for me, and at least in my opinion it is a really good size it has just enough room as you guys can see for me to have a little bit of sprawling spray space for my fingers and also it does just feel comfortable there's no hot spots there's nothing the milled titanium clip is well rounded over and I will say too the the titanium or milled titanium clip is very good you guys can see here hopefully there is a good amount of spring I feel like this is such a hard thing to do with milled clips milled clips are one of those things that like honestly you either hate them or love them because they're either done really well or they're not done well at 
all, but I can confirm ABWs are very good. There's like the right amount of tension here. You can see that you can easily open this thing up. So when it goes into your pocket or when you're putting it in your pocket, you're not gonna have to fight through and tear up your pocket on this guy, but it's also still like has enough retention that it's not going to just like fall out of your pocket. So really well done pocket clip, awesome little backspacer that has some machining into it to give you a little bit of texturing. Uh, I will say there's not much jimping on this knife and I do like that. And the jimping that is done isn't too aggressive or abrasive. There's just a little bit there. Um, but honestly, like I said, just really, really well done. Now, of course, this is a liner lock and it is a fully recessed liner lock. Now, the cool thing about these Ultim handles is that you can quite literally see everything. There's really no secrets, but you do have fully inset liners. So you guys can see from this angle, you know, the liners are inside or tucked up inside of those Ultim handles and it just looks good, feels good. And of course, whenever they do or whenever knife companies do, you know, like inset um, liners, it really gets you that best of both worlds. It gives you the rigidity of metal, but also it gives you that thinner overall um, size because you don't have to have a layer of Ultim, a layer of steel, then your blade, and then, you know, like the layer of steel, layer of Ultim on the other side. So it's a way of making a little bit of a thinner product. Now, I will say this is definitely by no means not a thin knife. Um, so this is definitely, I should say, it's not a thin knife, not by no means. Anyways, uh, I'm just tripping up on my English today here. English is hard, but you can see, you know, in comparison to, ironically, a TRM, this is definitely a thicker boy but i don't necessarily mind that either because i feel like with these abws like the model ones and model twos they're just designed to be just good old edc knives not necessarily um, reinventing the wheel but just giving you a really solid usa made product that just works and works every time and so for me i really do dig that because as i fail to close it um you know sometimes it is really just nice to have a solid decent knife that is once again 100% USA made. Now I should say at this point the reason why these little bastards go so fast and they're so hard to find is because of their price point. Honestly, most of these knives come in well under $300 and I believe most of them come in under $250. And so these things are reasonably affordable, definitely very similar to the TRMs where you're getting a full USA made product and it's coming in at a decent price. And once again, that's why I love covering these knives on my channel is that, you know, right now we look at things like we knives. We look at things like Savides, you know, you, you go out there and you're like, you know, if I want a more decent product, you know, whether that be, you know, better blade steels, better handle materials, better, you know, just more high quality things, you know, it oftentimes feels like, you know, you still have to go to China or you have to go to these overseas, you know, Ta Taiwanese made blades to get those materials. But the nice thing is, you know, in that similar price range of $200, $300. You know, it's not quite stepping up into, you know, Chris Reeve or full custom knives, but you know, these ABWs, TRMs, um, McNeese uh, knives, and even Tour are, you know, some really solid USA made brands that are making knives. Granted, once again, they can't always keep up with production, so it doesn't feel like they're the most attainable things, but they are out there. And that's why I love trying to cover these manufacturers on the channel because like I said they're making decent products for a decent price and honestly like I love that now I will say too the other thing I kind of like though I don't necessarily think it's intentional but there is a partial kind of forward finger troll you can kind of wrap your finger around that front of that flipper tab and get a nice kind of choke up on it I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for those people skittish of blades because you are you know putting yourself pretty close to that edge but I do like it and I do hold it that way too Anyways, that is kind of the uh, coverage of this knife, at least this kind of initial carry video. Once again, I've been carrying this thing for the past couple days and, you know, I really do like it and I'm just overall pretty pumped. And I just overall feel pretty pumped about being able to, so I totally failed to open it, uh, deliver you guys like a video and more videos on another American-made knife that is 
out there and another company that is making some really cool products for you guys. So once again, I know not everyone feels as motivated about USA made blades as I do, but it's just kind of been my like silent mission this year to really talk about USA makers because like I said, going into this year, I was like, man, you know, it just feels like China's taking over and you know, there's no more like American manufacturers. Like where's ZT making blades? Like they dropped, you know, the bayonet they dropped their bayonet knife and you know like that was the ZT's only new design for this year. So it's really cool. Like I said, I've very much enjoyed being able to work with smaller companies like ABW, TRM, Matt or McNeese, even though I just I just bought a Mac, a Mac 2. They did not send me one. But you know, it, it's been nice to work with these companies and try to get their products out there so that it feels like, you know, you aren't just limited to those, you know, like Chinese manufacturers, Taiwanese, um, or other foreign countries. There are some really good competitive offerings out there. So anyways, guys, I will finish this with the last kind of cool thing. It doesn't really affect performance or anything, but one thing I will say that I really think is very cool about these ABW knives is their pivot. So their pivot is pretty typical, but one thing that I just like to point out, I think it's just a fascinating thing on these guys, is that the way ABW machined their blade stock, it, their blade stock wraps around the um, stop pin. So hopefully I can show this. It's actually kind of hard to see the stop pin but you guys can see there is a stop pin I'm trying not to cut myself here there's a stop pin right here and when closed the flipper tab goes over the stop pin and stops internally so the stop pin is like over the middle of this flipper tab and then when you open the blade you guys can see here that the blade stock actually wraps around the stop pin so the stop pin as you guys can see through the ultim is actually like right here and the blade stock actually fully in encapsulates around the stop pin. So it's not like most typical folders, I guess I'll uh, pull one out here. Like most typical folders, you'll see a stop pin like right there. You guys can see that. And then when you open the knife, the blade stock just hits on that um, stop pin and just stops, right? So I think it's really cool and I'm not entirely sure. I don't think ABW claims that like this makes their liner locks stronger, but I do think it actually does add some degree of strength knowing that that uh, stop pin is like carved into or is sitting inside of the blade it's not just the blade resting on that uh, stop pin the blade or the stop pin is actually inside of the blade stock so i think that's really cool i'm not sure if anyone else has mentioned that but as I am with my knives. I just love looking at like the engineering side of things. And I just thought it was like the coolest thing ever that they made their stop pin kind of like rest inside the flipper tab, rest inside the blade so that when it comes to a stop, it's not just like right there. It's a little bit unique, a little bit different. Once again, not sure that actually affects performance or durability, but it's a really cool, neat uh, feature that I thought was worth talking about. So anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out. <laughs>